Marcus, we interviewed you in 2015, I believe. Holy crap, really? I know, it's been a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's a long time. It's a long time. (laughs) It was fun, though. It it was a great time. It was in Ventura at a theater, beautiful theater. Yes. Your your interviews have uh, many, many views, many, many comments. Really? Some of them positive, some of them not so positive. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I have a question I was wondering if you could address, and that is some of the people felt that you were able to get a film made or sell a script right. because you had previous connections. And can we dispel that myth or oh. talk about it? <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. I'm completely locked in because I was on a show a long time ago, so I know all the studio executives, and I know all the producers, and I know all the investors, and they just give me money all the time. So it's super easy. And you just meet them, you go to Dan Tanner's Oh, they call lunch. me all the time yeah. and they're like, hey, Marcus, we're trying to make this film. Would you like $30 million? We're going to distribute it through Warner Brothers. And I'm like, yeah, great. Sounds awesome. Happens all the time. For people that don't live in LA, because LA... I'm lying. Oh, oh and I, yes, like, and I can tell sarcasm. True. Yeah, I get it. sarcasm. <laughs> but but, but some people don't realize that like, they think that you could be a bartender where... Hollywood screenwriters or producers are and that you can just get someone's friend a script and that's not really how it works here Well, here's the thing like yeah That's possible Like it's all possible You know, I have a friend who was a PA and he was working on a studio lot and a very 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 big movie star was shooting a movie on that lot. So everybody was super excited about it. And my friend, the PA, was like, God, I've written this script and this movie star is perfect for it. How do I find a movie star? So they couldn't find him. Like he was always not around. So they figured out <laughs> which car was his and the PA put his script on the movie star's windshield. And the movie star took the script. And my friend ended up being represented by the movie star's agent. So, yeah, all kinds of stuff can happen. Um, It doesn't mean that that's going to happen. It doesn't mean that it's like you're set in stone. Trust me, I mean, I'm flattered that folks think that I was that big of a deal on Doogie Howser. I was not. (laughs) I was was like the lowest guy on the totem pole. I didn't have extra connections. I was working in an industry. I was doing my best to pay attention to things. I had an agent that had no interest in my scripts. I think I told the story the last time we talked. I had a friend who was an actor. He had a friend who was a manager. I did not know the manager. I had written the script. My friend was like, you should meet my friend, the manager. That's how it happened. It wasn't like, I mean, I guess if, if, if the concern is you had an advantage because you had a friend, yeah. I did. Um, Would I had that friend if I lived in Kentucky? Probably not. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean that if you're in Kentucky, you can't blow up in the film industry. Because that happens a lot too. Like people enter contests or they submit their scripts to the Sundance Lab or whatever it is, and they're in Wisconsin or they're in Idaho or they're wherever, and somebody sees that script, they don't have any connections, they just have a great script. And people go, we're gonna fly you out to Sundance and you're gonna sit here and we're gonna help you develop. Then the film gets made and then they blow up and they're sitting on the dais and then they're making other films and they're way past me. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, yeah, everybody has advantages or disadvantages one way or another. But, you know, I, I, for the record, it's not like I was connected in that sense. Would you say, too, even if someone is on this, like, trajectory of, like, film after film after film, 
even for that level that it can still be like starting from scratch again for something that that person wants to do if they want to do a, a script or something. The industry has a very short attention span um, and a long memory. So if they remember you well at a high enough level, there's a lot of stuff you can try and you can do again. Um, I like to talk about people like uh, Danny DeVito, Kevin James. Everybody looks at these guys as leading men, and they are. But they didn't start there. Danny DeVito was doing off-Broadway plays, playing a dog, like literally like on his hands and knees, barking. But he continued to grow and got to such a point where people loved his work that he became a leading man. Same thing with Kevin James. Not that he was barking on stage, but you know, he was a stand-up comedian. He was getting roles and stuff. The stand-up career got him the show. He was the leading man in the show, and then he starts being a leading man in, in, in film. So, you know, you start where you are and you grow from there. But I think that if Kevin James had started off with his first project. I was like, I'm not doing this unless I'm the leading man. I don't, I don't necessarily think that that would have flown. You know, I think you build a repertoire and then people just go with you. If people like you, they'll follow you anywhere. Look at Will Smith. Will Smith was a sitcom star, right? But people loved the show and they loved him. And he was like, I want to become a serious actor. And everybody went, okay. And they show up for his movies. You know, it's like, that's the thing. Like, it's not advantages, disadvantages. Everybody's got them. Everybody's got both. But it doesn't mean that what you want is impossible. You know, you hunker down and focus on it. None of these people are different from anybody else. They're all humans. They just put their minds in a certain space and were like, this is what I want. I deserve it. Nothing's going to stop me. That's all really anybody has to do. And I know that sounds, you know, hippy dippy or whatever, but that's all anybody did. You know, they got punched in the face and they got punched in the face and they got doors slammed on them. And they're like, okay, there's another door. I'm gonna go over here now. You know, they didn't necessarily get on Twitter <laughs> and complain about the door that got slammed on them. They just, you know, just keep going. It's all you can do, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but that's what I think.